Boxing King Media in association with Boxer Spencer Oliver. Um, we saw a kick flying in from Michaela, but other than that, a pretty calm way in. Well, pretty tame, if I'm honest. I was expecting a little bit more. You know, if we look back on the week, tensions have been high. You know, there's a lot on the line for all these girls, actually. They're, you know, it's history in the making. You know, 20,000 people at the O2 Arena to see an all-women's cast, for, all-women's card, first time in history. So, you know, each one of these girls wants to be the one that shines. You know, the one that, you know, is the standout. So, a lot on the line. But, yeah, the, the weigh-in was, was pretty, um, pretty calm, to be fair. I think all the tension has been brought up through the week. But the weigh-in, yeah, it all went pretty well. One little flying kick is pretty, um, yeah, pretty standard stuff. But apart from that, it was all right. Standard. Um, oh, listen, isn't it? Like, you know, at weigh-ins, it's like I say to you, when you're tight at the weight, you're proper snappy, proper edgy, right? And you can see these girls are all cutting weight as well. Normally, when you have the last head-to-head, -head, which is the last time you'll see each other before you get in the ring with the guys, mate, you see much more than just little kicks. Do you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is tensions do fly high. So I thought that all went pretty well. If you saw the build-up to like Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall through the week, you thought, if anything, them girls were going to snap. But they was, um, they was all pretty calm. So, yeah, overall, I thought it was all right. Any particular fight that you think will catch fire on the undercard? Obviously, we've spoken at length about the main event, so I'm not going to go into, into them too much. Yeah, yeah definitely. Michaela Maya and Alicia Baumgartner, that is going to be an absolute barnstormer. You know, genuine dislike between the girls. Barnstormer, um, Baumgartner says, you know, stormer, barnstormer. Baumgartner, um, I know, my head's gone, mate. It's all over the place. Baumgartner wants, she's got a point to prove. You know, she's, um, we've seen her over here before with Terry Harper. Girl can whack and she can move a little bit as well. Michaela Mayer is the one that's, you know, the unified champion. Um, that's a great fight, mate. It's, it is, Mayer's the favourite, but Baumgardner, you know, she could pull off a surprise victory tomorrow. Loads of prospects on the undercard. I just want you to pick one out, just one that stands out, the one that you're really looking forward to watching. I'm really, really, really looking forward to There's a couple, actually. Caroline Dubois, um, I think she's a superstar in the making. I really do. Lauren Price also. Karis Arkenstall, looking forward to that one. There's a number of them on there, actually, um, that I'm really looking forward to. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great, it's a solid undercard. It definitely is. I uh, just want to speak to you about other matters. Deontay Wilder's coming back this Saturday as well. You think he's picked a good challenge in uh, Robert Hellenius? Perfect opponent for me. I think um, we'll find out exactly what Wilder's got left. I hope he's still got a little bit left, if I'm honest, because it, it, he's good for the heavyweight division. That trilogy with Fury, though, may have taken a lot out of him, but we will only find that out when the, you know, when the bell rings on Saturday night. But Robert Hellenius is a good opponent, strong opponent, and it will give us a good indication on where um, Wilder's at exactly in his career with, with Hellenius because he, like, if, he's, if he's you know on the decline then I think Hellenius will push that out of him and it'll be a tough fight but if he's anything like his old self I think he wins in style so I think he's a perfect opponent we'll find out a lot more about what Wilder's got left after Saturday night well, I'm sure will uh, just want to speak to you about some comments Eddie Hearn made about Referring to people at Sky, which I'm assuming was, was yourself, obviously you was working for Sky. I think his comments were along the lines of, you know, you've seen a lot of righteous people at Sky making comments about, you know, the whole Ben Eubank fight that should have got cancelled. And um, I think Eddie's comments were along the lines about the Dillian White fight that no one really challenges that, even though people knew that obviously there was a failed test in there, even though obviously Dillian got cleared afterwards. Uh, but at that time, that fight against Rivas was allowed to go ahead. Yeah, well, listen, no one, no, um, no one challenged it because didn't read too much into it, didn't really know too much about it, if I'm honest. But this one has uh, has been in the public eye. You know, the, the facts are the facts. I love Conor Ben. You know, like Eddie Hearn, and I, like, and I think you know he's an amazing promoter. But the facts are the facts, and what are we meant to not talk about it, we're meant to brush it under the table. You know, there's lots of stuff going on here. Like, you know, that's the, you know. It, it, it's a difficult one, really, because, you know, you don't want to sling anyone under the bus, but you've got to deal with the facts, mate. And it's, the, you know, and we've also got to talk about the, the, the stuff that were found, the, what, the, what the drug that he failed, the drug test that he failed, actually, and what the drug was, the fertility drug. You know, how did that get in the system? I know he wants to prove his innocence. Well, we're not hearing anything and he needs to sort of step up at some point And, you know, if, he's, if he can clear his name, then great. But I think that's a very difficult thing to do with with the um, with the substance that he's been banned with. I've seen Connor's Instagram post today. I think he feels like 
the media probably turned against him on if you saw that or not. Well, yeah, because they got, they're going to, aren't they? Because of the fight of that magnitude, it was pulled at the 11th hour. And I think it goes a lot deeper than this, by the way, with just kind of doing that. Like, it goes a lot deeper, mate. I think there's a lot more to uncover. Why was it covered up until then? That's the thing, like, we're trying... Listen, I'm better placed to speak about this than anybody in the world. Like, I nearly lost my life in the ring through dehydration, yeah? Like, the, the, the brain loses the fluid in and around it. The blood vessels lose their elasticity. They become like bits of straw. So when you get punched, they can snap. So if you've got a guy that's getting down to 157, which was unrealistic, really, when he, he's tight at 160, that, he's in the danger zone. And so if you've got another guy that's tested positive, and until he proves otherwise, we've got to say he's positive for this band substance, this Nandrily uh, fertility drug, this banned, banned substance, yeah, the, the fertility drug, I forget the name of whatever it is, which increases the testosterone levels. We have to look at that seriously, mate, and say, look, what is going on here? Like, you know, the, the outcome of that can be very, very dangerous. And I'm better to speak about that than anyone, dehydration and people, you know, making weight, because that's what happens. That's why his dad, Chris Senior, is so vocal about it all the way through, saying he didn't want the fight to go ahead. Unfortunately, in this situation, I think... People have put wealth over health, and we're in a sport where you've got to look after fighters, you know, and I think with what's gone on here, I think there's a lot of layers that still need to be uncovered. Thank you, and I just wanted to get your opinion on, I did a public poll across all our platforms a couple of days ago, just asking people three options. Is Conor guilty? Uh, is he innocent or are you unsure? Can I ask a question? Why are you asking me, is he guilty or is he innocent? Because... No, 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 no. I'm, no, I'm saying, why are you asking me that? I, I, like, is it not fucking obvious if someone tests positive that they're guilty? So what is, what is the argument here? I don't understand what the argument is. He's done a drug test, it's positive, you're guilty. Like, and then everyone's going, oh, give him a chance. He, what, how are they going to change that, that positive test? They can't. And now they, all they're doing is going, oh, well, it's not a UCAD one, it's a VADA one. But they've always talked about VADA being the golden testing and like... The, the, I don't understand it, mate. I think it's just going way, way like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like this thing is, this Connor, this Connor, the Connor Ben failing the test is actually not even the eye of the storm now. I think you've got to look at the layers and the cover ups, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and go, well, what's going on here exactly? But I just don't get why everyone's going, well, until we've heard from Connor, you know, you can't, he's fucking tested positive. What more do you want? I, don't I think that. just as a counter argument, I think the, the the people are arguing the fact that when Dillian White tested positive for Dynaball, eventually, obviously, he was cleared. So I think they're trying to. I think that's yeah. the assumption. No, but that's what I'm saying. Until we hear from him, which we're not, and I know they're going, oh, it's in with the lawyers, rare, rare, rare. Well, if I was not guilty, I'd be shouting from the rooftops, mate. Give me the B sample. Where's the B sample? What is going on with the B sample? Like, which is, you know, I, I just don't understand it. I think it's just sort of like. We're doing interview after interview after interview and everyone's saying, you know, we're, we're not hearing from their side, but the facts are the facts. And until we can prove otherwise, you know, it is what it is. That's, that's the way I feel about it. Um, I'll give you an example of public opinion. So I gave people three options, guilty, innocent, or if you're unsure. How many people do you think voted that he might be guilty? More than half. No, 40% uh, thought he was guilty. The other 30-30 split was over unsure or innocent. So it's like a 60-40 split. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but unsure, how can you go? That's what I'm, I'm trying to work out, right? If I go, right, I do a drug test now and I test positive and I go, I'm not, I'm not guilty, I'm not, but I've tested positive and then we pull it out to everyone in this room. How many of you think he's guilty? Because I've tested positive. Surely everyone's going to say he's fucking guilty. Surely. I don't, unless I'm reading it wrong. Why are you reading it wrong here? Do you understand? I don't understand that. So what I'm saying is I love Connor and I hope he can prove his innocence. But as it stands, he's positive and he needs to turn it around. I don't know. Spencer, I really appreciate your time. Anything else you would add? Cheers, bro. Anything else you would add? <laughs> I think I've said enough. I feel like you're on stage and everyone's you just, just performed and you've got a big Absolutely. crowd. Thank you. Cheers, mate.